All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's our number two, the Paul Harrell program. Thank you so much for being with us. The intersection of conservative ideas and reality. We're building a liberty machine. We want you to be a part of that liberty machine. Folks, we just came off a great uh, first hour and uh, just a ton of information. And we left you, and when we left you, we were talking about this bill, uh, 16 felon Arkansas politicians and counting. And it's an uh, article over at conduitforaction.org. It's, uh, uh, so it's an article. Um, and it's uh, written by Mr. David Ferguson. David is the former head of the Bureau of Legislative Research. He joins us via Skype. David, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. I'm really glad you could do this, and I'm glad we could take remote phone calls, uh, you know, when we're on uh, on location. So, David, uh, why why did you feel the need to write this article about, in your experience, you know, decades serving the people uh, about these 16 felon Arkansas politicians? Well, I have to first say that I really like most of the legislators I've ever worked with, and it's it's kind of a hard article to do. But I wrote it because I feel like we're in Groundhog Day. Bad things happen, legislators get convicted, and then it's all over again. We, we never change anything. We never try to uh, provide any more transparency. We just leave it in the same situation, and people make the same mistakes. Uh, do you think that that's happened uh, specifically in light of, you know, you've got a former state representative, Mike O'Neill, pleading guilty. Uh, you've got State Senator John Woods, who's been indicted. I mean, I mean, that's how you start your article. So you feel like it's Groundhog Day because we have obvious news in the headlines and it, we may have more coming down. Who knows? And yet they have the opportunity to do something and, and they're not doing it. Well, you know, it, when I looked at uh, these latest uh, indictments and the guilty plea, uh, it's just another situation where legislators, in this case, they have a lot of discretion over handing out money, and it's just been an institutional-wide thing where you know you hand out money to gain votes. I mean, that's just fact. That's how it's how it's done. But uh, it also leaves it where you can use the uh, funds to get kickbacks. And as you know, I've looked back at, at a lot of these different offenses over the years. There's been offenses of kickbacks, mail fraud, just you know, money laundering, and we never do anything about it. And so I wanted to just, you know, not necessarily cause something to happen. I wanted to point out that we're doing the same thing over and over again, and the legislature still does not like ethics does not like uh, financial disclosure, and we're going to continue to see this. That's just how it's going to be. Yeah, you mentioned uh, ethics, and, of course, uh, Senator, Senator Linda Collins-Smith, Senator Terry Rice, their bill to require uh, attorneys uh, to basically submit to the same ethics rules that non-attorneys do, not being able to carry bills for their clients. It failed with only 20 votes, and they needed 24 to get out of the uh, Senate today. Uh, we had Republicans uh, that decided to vote against this bill. You know, John Cooper was one of them. Trent Garner was another. Then, of course, we have Obamacare Medicaid expansion and the uh, potential consulting fees that people are collecting as legislator. Senator Brian King's bill, SB 175, failed last week in the House committee. Uh, you know, and and I want to add, feel free to comment on those. But in okay. the, uh, go ahead. Me, I was just going to say that. Uh, when you're talking about this uh, bill that uh, I forgot who the sponsors was, but the the bill on um, uh, on the attorneys' fees. Yeah, Linda Collins Smith, Terry Rice. Yeah. yeah, this this is just another instance of Groundhog Day. Uh, what happens is attorneys will represent a client and make sure that their contract is definite enough that there's nothing in there about lobbying. So when they come and lobby on behalf of their client, they can say, oh, no, I'm not being paid for lobbying. And the law only provide, prohibits lobbying for compensation. So they can lobby all day they, they want for their clients. And let me tell you why I said it was Groundhog Day. Uh, about, let's see, 2005, they, the legislature got an increase 
and their pay. One of the things they gave up was monthly expenses. And many years ago, there was a, a maximum, and, they, and instead of putting in how much they actually spent, the lawyers were smart enough to say, well, I say smart, but the lawyers were smart enough to say, oh, I paid the entire amount to my law firm. So if it was $6,000, oops, I paid it to my law firm. So there's no accounting of, of what, uh, how the money was used as expenses. Well, then other people say, well, we like that too. Even though I'm not a lawyer, I'll pay my business for that, for providing the telephones and all that stuff. And then it got so bad that some people would just pay the, their spouse the whole amount. And so eventually it got so bad that one of the things the, uh, commission on the salaries required was that they give up those uh, give up those payments and so it goes all back to running things through a law firm making an exception for lawyers and so now we move forward and we still have people who are representing clients but say I wouldn't being paid to lobby wow I mean and so it's the essentially, I mean, we have, I mean, do we have that going on now, but just maybe a different way? People have kind of found a new loophole or a new way for this to be acceptable. Well, it's, it's easy. I mean, you, the, the law says you have, to, you're only prohibited on lobbying if you're being paid for lobbying. So uh, you get paid for uh, representing the client and it can be a big old fat check and, uh, you just say, oh, I'm not doing lobbying. Then you can turn around and lobby all day and night. So I know that's what the bill was designed to uh, to attach, but uh, I also know that's a very, very hard thing to do. Yeah. So just to clarify, I mean, when we're talking about attorneys here, I mean, there's a loophole. I mean, Senator Terry Rice said there's a loophole. Uh, Jeremy Hutchinson was saying, well, you're trying to single out attorneys uh, you know, and, and and they read the law back to him saying, well, the law is now that, you know, it's illegal to do this. And Terry Rice said, well, it's not being enforced. And that's why we need this. And he mentioned he used the phrase loophole. Well, it's, it's, it's not that the law is not being enforced. It's that the law specifically says you have to be paid for lobbying. And they just represent their client but their contract excludes lobbying. So yeah. it's, just, it's just not within it's not within the current law to prohibit that. Yeah. So in your article over at conduitforaction.org, you, you mentioned uh, the big investigation of the late 1990s, and you mentioned that during that, uh, some Arkansas legislators might have been confused with a Weight Watchers group because so many of them lost weight during the investigation. And you're the, you're mentioning Groundhog Day. Do you think that we may be on the verge of uh, another big investigation, or maybe we're in the midst of it right now? Well, it's it's been a few years since I've spent any time with the legislature. You know, around there, I might be there one or two days, but I still hear from people and executive and different you know different offices around there, and and. Uh, I keep hearing rumors of those who look sick or acting different. So I just have to rely on their observation. I don't know, but it sounds like there are a lot of folks that uh, are worried whether or not they've done anything that might be indicted. I don't know. But one of the things that really struck me about the 90s, uh, I think all of us ended up having to talk to an FBI agent about some memo or something. They did a thorough jo job. But uh, the, the thing that struck me is that it started out as an investigation of one person and then a lot of people and then a lot of people started looking bad and then some people got off. But after that, there were at least two more investigations, one dealing with uh, uh, an irrigation system and one dealing with bribery, dealing with uh, Greyhound Racing. And they they went out and looked at those things too. As people started spilling their guts, they spilled guts about other things. So, you know, I hope there's not a lot of other stuff going. But what I saw in the '90s is not very, uh, it's not a very good picture. So yeah, no, absolutely not. And and you mentioned uh, so uh, of the crimes, the 16 people you could recount off the top of your head. You wrote this article about. 
that they were uh, convicted while serving in office, including mail fraud, bribery, money laundering, defrauding government programs, kickbacks, embezzlement, and tax fraud. And uh, down here at the bottom, I mean, you list you list you know the legislature what what they did, but you don't you don't mention their names. And so, uh, why why didn't you actually mention their names? Well. That's that's because number one, I wanted to I wanted to point it out that uh, we're in a kind of groundhog day on these types of fences, but you have to understand that you know, I worked with these folks for many years and I've seen them go to jail, I've seen them come out and and uh, you know like over Christmas I saw Christmas pictures of this guy with his grandkids. And, you know, why should this guy's name be drugged back again? Some of them have passed away. Some of them have gotten pardons. Uh, it's, it's just because I basically liked uh, legislators. And you can like some, some people without liking what they did or what they represent. In fact, there are a lot of them that I like that I wouldn't have ever voted for because I just disagree with them too, liber- yeah. too liberal. Yeah, so we're talking with David Ferguson. Uh, you went to work for the Bureau of Legislative Research in 1980, correct? Yes, and most of the most of the things that I listed or the numbers I've listed are probably with most of them are within the last 20 years. And so you say here at the end, uh, why didn't I list the names of the felons referred to in this article? First, their names are not important for the point being made. Second, I worked with, liked a lot of them. Uh, the fact that I like them just made it harder to see them get in trouble, uh, and no others will likely get in trouble in the future. And you say, if you still want to know their names, it's easy. You can Google the information. But if all you got out of this article was a quest to look up names, you have missed the point. What point are you referring to? Well, the, the point is that this type of conduct is going to continue no matter how many ethics rules you put out there, they're still going to be bad actors. But Arkansas is so, Arkansas legislature has been so anti-ethics, anti-open government. I mean, you you can't even uh, see what's going on in the the, the Senate. You can't even hear an audio of, of what's going on in the Senate committee. And some of the House committees, you can't hear an audio. So because, because of all this uh, lack of openness, it just is a breeding ground for this for this type of conduct, and they really don't understand that so many of their colleagues have had to suffer because they got a little bit arrogant and decided they had a little bit more power than what they thought. Uh, I just hate to see it going going on and on. Yeah, well, I, I really do appreciate it, uh, Mr. David Ferguson. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us, former head of the Bureau of Legislative Research down here. And I, I, I can imagine after covering this for 10 weeks, you are enjoy, enjoying your retirement. Oh, yeah. I'm, I've, I'm glad to be be out in the fields most of the time. And in, in fact, if it was prettier today, that's where I would have been. But I want to mention one other thing, I, I, just in thinking about it, is you have to realize how much money – goes through the legislature, how much influence. And I want to mention one last thing, and that is you had an uh, had a interview last year with Alan, Senator Alan Clark, and he said that he saw bribery, mail, uh, blackmail, and... Uh, uh, Just generally arm-twisting. Arm-twisting going on, and he said he was willing to testify about that. I have no idea whether anybody bothered to talk to him. I don't know whether anything he might have say have to say would uh, lead to anything. But that says a lot when, like you said, there was two billion reasons uh, why you've got to keep an eye on folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, I mean, it's so much money. And I think we're seeing that nationally. I think that's why it, it's so difficult to repeal this thing nationally is because 
you know, uh, the government's gotten involved and the people, and this is not about, you know, caring for poor people as much. It's about making sure people at the top, you know, get to maintain their quality of, of life. Uh, Mr. Dave Ferguson, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. I always love your articles at Conduit for Action. And remember, there are a lot of good legislators. It's just a very bad environment. That's exactly right. All right, sir. Well, you be safe, okay? All righty. All righty. Uh, that's uh, Mr. David Ferguson via Skype. The first Skype phone call we've ever taken here on the Paul Hero program from the Marble Palace. The Liberty Machine is back in just a moment. Mm-hmm. 